Hi everybody, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. I am going to do, it's gonna have a lot of little bits of everything, but I'm gonna do a sneak peek today. I'm using a sneak peek of what will be a special promotion that Stampin' Up, Stampin Up has coming this November. Um, and they've done this for the last couple of years where they let you see something that's going to be in the upcoming January catalog but then they add a Christmas twist to it that's a limited edition. So that's what they're doing again this year. So when I use it, I will be showing you that. And it will also be, if for those of you in my card club or interested in joining my online card club, um, this is gonna be our paper and our stamp sets, um, the stamp set that I use. I And the embellishments, it doesn't come with ribbon, so I, haven't, I have no idea what the ribbon is. This is not your first um, card for card club, but it will be something that you can do if you get the, the bundles. Um, and then I'm also gonna use the pearlized enamel effects, which are part of my upcoming um, Art of Stamping Christmas class. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things with that first in case you've missed these videos. Here are the um, pearls, and I'm gonna be using those, like I said, on today's card. In my class, I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna we're gonna do six projects with three different bundles, and you can go to this video or this video to find out more details about that. And then I'll put the link um, to my website where you can get more details about that class down below this video. But I'm gonna come up with some ways to use them that aren't just pearls. We, probably on one card, we'll use them as pearls so you can see how they work that way. Um, and that's kind of ish how I'm gonna use them today. Super pretty, I'm so pleased with the way it turned out today. So these are the three bundles that I will be using during the online class. If you have something similar, you can always substitute. So it's these three. This is my latest video that's popped up because, you know, it's raining outside. It's kind of humid in my office and it's never good for the glue situation. Well, it's good for glue. Use your glue if you live someplace like I do where it can be humid. So these are those. The other thing, we're going to use the those three bundles. Again, you can use whatever bundles or you can get the bundles as part of an add-on. Um, and the other thing we're going to focus on on the other three cards that don't use the pearlized um, effects is the gilded leafing and so i showed you that in yesterday's video so let's take a look at this new set it is a sneak peek so if you if you need it now you're a de if you're a demonstrator you can buy it my desk is a hot mess like there's no room for anything here um or you can join my team there at stampin up has a special going on right now where you get to pick more things in your kit so you could pick these as part of your things so this will be the set framed florets that is in the um, upcoming January catalog. I'm so glad that it has us so lucky to call you friend because every year when it gets, when I start doing some St. Patrick's Day cards, I'm like, what do we have that, that could tie into that? So that will obviously work and that, that's this time of year that this catalog will be out. So this is the one that will be in the catalog and I'll show you the dies. This is the one that's an add-on. So you can get this just on its own. You can get a part of the suite in November um, and it's the Christmas part super cute font. This is what I'm going to use today. I'm not using the flowers today. Here are the dies. These are the dies that are on today's card. And then here's, look how pretty, because originally I was thought I would add gold and I didn't, but can't throw those out. So that's when you run that through. So this cuts out from the center. You'll see that in a second when I use it. And then we'll have some hearts because of course this will be part of a Valentine's Day time period. And then these all cut out pieces of the stamp set. And then you can see there's some other pieces that I'm gonna use today. So that is the dies. And obviously all of the sentiments in the Christmas set fit inside this super cute oval. And then the, the other oval here. Then there are some, so the Christmas set and then the embellishments. The embellishments will be in Card Club. It doesn't look like there's very many of them. There's 75 in there. I'm like, this is a half a packet, but no, there's 75. Um, and they're really pretty. And you can see when you, this is why I was going to do it in gold. So this will make an appearance on the card. And it may be Card Club, your first project. But look how well that matches. So super pretty. So these are limited edition. Once November 1st hits, they're while supplies last. As with the Christmas set and then this paper. So the paper is fun because one side obviously matches the flowers and then the other side, if you flip it over, on a lot of them can be Christmassy. Not traditional Christmas, but Christmas. And this is the one I was gonna use, but you'll see why I didn't use it in a minute. I love this piece of paper, that is gorgeous. Um, this is the one that I am using. Really pretty colors, but then you can see the flip side of it. Look at how pretty this one is. 
That's just gorgeous. I could wallpaper my office in that because I've been looking at some retro kind of wallpapers because I'm only in the midst of um, wanting to redo like half the rooms in our house. My husband hates when I get in these moods. We didn't want to redo our kitchen. I love my kitchen. Everybody loves my kitchen, but our refrigerator broke and then I had to pick a new color. So I have um, a green and orange fridge. So, you know, it, it, it will be okay in the kitchen we have now, but it just is crying out for something new, right? So for today's card, I'm going to do a white base. I, I put it on every color. So sometimes don't be afraid to do that. Don't think, well, I was going to do it on blue. And so here's the blue. Just hold it on top of other backgrounds once you have your card done. And then I have cut this piece to four by five and a quarter. And then I've been, I've been using this a lot recently. This is the in color glimmer paper that is six by six. It's six by six and it is in the catalog and you can see it's ombre. So down here, it's more of the, um, I haven't used this color in forever. I think it's, it's not strawberry, it's sweet sorbet. Um, and then it kind of fades to the pink. So on this card right here, it will give us a fun Christmas feel in non-traditional colors, which I'm a huge fan of that. So I'm gonna take, when you use this paper and you're gonna use a die, it's fun to kind of place it so you know you're gonna get the most use of the ombre. So I'll put this on here. And then I'm just gonna turn around it because you don't wanna waste any, because look how pretty that is and you'd be able to get more things out of that because this frame does on a six by six, it does take most of it as you see. But that's okay because you're gonna see in a second, you can make some of these other things smaller. So we have that. And then I have the sorbet piece here. This must be um, Tahitian Tide. Because those colors aren't overtly Christmas, I haven't been using them or fall, right? Cause I've been on that kind of a kick. So now I'm going to, on this one, on my other one, I did it more of this. This time I'm gonna go over here for this big die and grab this piece here. I used this on another card. Oh, if you got my VIP card, VIP video cards for September purchases, then you have some of this in your packet. And then over here, I'm gonna go and try to keep them in the light. So that way it'll be a little bit more of a difference in the colors that I have. The other ones I tried to get the ombre through it, but it didn't matter because you couldn't really see them. So just hand trim these out. I find it's, and sometimes if you do my classes, your piece of paper looks like this because if I give everybody a square one and we're starting with six by six, then I have to buy packets and packets and packets and I end up with colors that, a whole bunch of other colors. And I know you don't always want ombre paper on your projects. So I'm gonna run these through my dye machine, which is not on my table because there's absolutely no room for it. Here they are, I just did one pass. So you can see this cuts out. And now if it was, I can see it really well. I still have wedding nails. Um, I don't know if you can, but it's got a fun beveled edge. If that was in the foils, you'd be able to see it better, which is what this is. See the, the bevels there? And you can see it up close. I just know on camera, it can be harder to pick that up on the glimmer paper. Let me pop the rest of these out. They just have to be, it's glimmer paper. So, you know, I'm going to have to be careful, be gentle when you pull it. And I'll fast forward this part. I'm going to show you this one. I find the easiest one in these glimmer papers is to just gently lift it up. And as many of these things that will stay in the die, it's easier, I think, to get them out through the die. So just kind of hold them on and kind of push those back in with your fingernail. Then you don't have to poke them out of the paper and you can just use your rolly brush. See right here where I lifted instead. Now on these, I'm going to have to poke out of here and it's faster, I think, to poke them out of the actual die. I mean, they're cut, they just have to be poked because it's glimmer paper and it has that little texture that catches on itself. Sometimes I am a fan of leaving them in, like the ones that didn't pull out, pop, pop out from here, I'm gonna leave them because I like the interest, but for this one, you do wanna get all of these out. So got those out, now let's just put this card together. You're gonna take this middle part. Now, if you have a piece of designer series paper and you have run this through, then obviously you could flip this over and it would be a different color. I'm going to use the little piece, the little embossing pillow that comes in the embossing kit. And I'm just gonna rub some of that on here. Because again, the glimmer paper has a tendency to kind of stick on itself. And then I wanna put my words up here in the darker part. It'll just show up a little bit better. 
I'm going to use Whisper White, another thing I've been on. And sometimes it's not that, um, like I'm in love with something. It's just on my desk. I'm like, well, I can make this work again. And then I think it also shows you, if you have a white pad, the last four videos that I've done that, you know, it shows up on. You do want to be careful when you do this. And this one, this one mounts pretty straight. I did think about putting it in my stamparatus, but it was good. Because you don't want to waste glimmer paper. Obviously, you saw that took a whole sheet to do this one frame. But I want to make sure I get everywhere, but I don't want to catch the edges. So, push in the middle of your stamp and then to the edges where you know there are letters. But don't rock it everywhere because, you, again, you don't want to get those edges everywhere. And then, you know, it's, you can't see it. I'm going to use white powder. I was, uh, my original card did, was, I was going to use gold. But look how perfectly that works when you use the little pillow and you press carefully. That, it, it, it looks professional. <laughs> it looks like you bought the card. Is that what we want? Is that what we're going for? Sometimes I don't know. So let's heat this up. It, the glimmer paper, I'm not going to talk over the top of the gun. The glimmer paper does take longer because it's a thicker paper to heat. Once you think you have it everywhere, just kind of tilt it around. Make sure it all melted because you don't want to lose an H or lose one of your, your letters. But again, you don't want it to... When it's just embossed, then it has that nice raised up portion to it. And if you do it for too long, then it will um, go flat. Isn't that pretty? Now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to work on this panel to start so I can get my ribbon on. I'm going to take my frame and my stamp and seal. And because I know, and I knew when I did it, well, I thought when I did it, maybe I'd put pearls all the way around and I didn't. But I know I'm going to put the liquid pearls right through these edges here. So this will get covered up. So it doesn't matter that my sticky is showing through there. Put this on here. Just kind of let it drop. Isn't that, that is just gorgeous. I love it. Then I want this to be popped up a little bit. Our dimensionals. And then you can see this is warped a little bit. Just pull it back on itself. But don't do it while you're embossing. It's still warm. Make, give it a second to cool off. Pretty, pretty. Now I'm going to take the ribbon. And this is our um, white glittered organdy. We may use this in club. I haven't really looked at all of the things. Sometimes I have to compare. And I don't think we've used this in club. That's the other thing. Sometimes I forget what we've used. But it has a winter and it has a spring because it has the pink parts in it. So just tie a bow. I'm gonna that big. You use less ribbon if you can manage to tie it while it's still on the spool. And then I want it on the card, but I want to be able to tuck these underneath it. So I don't want to put in any adhesive here. Because if you put the adhesive here, then you're gonna be fighting it. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna add my a little bit of adhesive right here. And then directly across. And then I can still stick my things down in my frame without having to worry about that. This is a cute piece too. The 80s are back, people. <laughs> I look at some of our papers. Well, you just go to the store and you look at the clothes. You look at the things for your house. I mean, I have a green and orange fridge coming, although that's a bit 70s, isn't it? Um, I guess this could be a little late. It, this looks like geese. Does it not look like it for those of you that were in the Midwest and people decorated their geese? My family did not, but people did. And that kind of looks like some geese clothing. But those colors too. The dusty everything. So it's kind of a dusty pink on there. Now we have this. Now, uh, later on, if you want to take and add a drop of glue down there, you can. I'm going to use some pearls. 
On this one before, I did cut off the stem, so we'll see if we need to this time, because it just kind of depends on how, where these hit, like if you did them higher, if you did them lower, where your ribbon is, because you don't want to cover up your words. Yeah, see, if I cut this off, it gives me a little bit less that I'm working with, so it's easier to have it masked down in here so we don't cover up our words. Stick that there. And then I did the same thing with these. You just don't need, so I really didn't even need to cut around that. I should have told you that, but I kind of forgot. I didn't make this card today. So it's been a minute <laughs> and I've been busy. So sometimes you forget. And now I can layer these a little bit better than I could on my other card because on my other card, like I told you, the I was trying to go more ombre, which in here you didn't end up seeing. I am gonna add some glue to this one because these are more on top of each other. So just take a bit of liquid glue, get here where your ribbon is, kind of seal that in there and then just add these because it is glimmer paper and the none of the adhesives except for glue and the seal plus hold those down super well. So you could leave it just like this. You could use it. We have lots of embellishments that would work, but I am super into these right now. And look, you're just gonna die when you see how much this adds to this card. So what you wanna do is first, I forgot, start on some scrap paper to make sure this first little one that comes out, cause see it needs to get shaken to the bottom and you don't want a big old bubble. There we go. So start at the, the tiny tip of this and then just generous amount because you, again, you know, I don't like you to have embellishments left five years later and be like, what do I do with these? Because you saved them. Don't save this. It reminds me kind of the shirt paint that we used to have. And you know, it didn't last for years because it dries up, it's paint. So kind of squeeze less and then squeeze more when it gets to the top. This does come out with like little points on top of it. They go down, which you'll see when I show you my dried card. So I am just, I thought about getting the whole thing, but I really liked the way the blue showed behind those. So. I just did the four corners. And again, squeeze a generous portion. If you have a smaller card and you don't want a generous portion, you don't need it. This one, I think, but well, look what I did. I put that right where I need to do these. We'll make it work. We'll just go over the top of it. I didn't think about that when I was putting it on there. And then if any of them look too small, you can add a little bit, but really they all fade on their own. And then I thought, well, I'll add some pearls. And I thought, why am I gonna add pearls? I have this. This time you are going to use a generous portion. If you saw the video where I did the, the tree one, I started, I did two different trees. Here, I'll show you this one. These are pretty tiny on here because I wanted to use lots of colors. Then on the second card, the one I showed you just a second ago, which I have no idea where I laid it and I haven't left the table. Um, they got a little bit bigger. This is even bigger than that. So just add pearls. Just pretend that you have a piece of embellishments and you're gonna add pearls, but these are big, really impressive pearls. So just keep squeezing. And again, it, it comes out a little bit with the Dairy Queen top, Dairy Queen cone top, but they do, it smashes itself down. But then the nice thing is if you want some smaller pearls, you just squeeze a little less. You just want an odd number and you can get carried away because this is fun and you have to kind of play around your ribbon. The biggest tip when using these is to make sure you set it aside until it's dry because you don't want anything to ruin them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have an odd number, so stop. And then just put the lid on. I have not had to do anything with the tops of these. So let me show you this one. Isn't that pretty? Now I'll show you the dry one. I did this yesterday and you can see how none of them, none of my pearls have the Dairy Queen thing going. It just kind of falls down on its own, but it's all the way dry and it, it's pretty humid here because it rained last night and it's, I think it's been raining throughout the night and it's still early in the morning and I didn't glue those down. 
I thought maybe I'd gotten them with the pearls. I'm just gonna add my little bit of glue. So pretty. Again, be super careful. If you're interested in signing up for my online class, for my online card club or anything, just get on my email list. You can go to my website and there's a little pop-up there. This is the wet one, so I'm gonna move it out. Of, oh, I'll leave it here and then I'll just stop talking and move it. Um, but all of that will be down below the video or you can go to my website and get on my email. I will catch you back here later. Bye.